You're about to embark on a very long video of me rating cards. And by the way, this isn't rating cards in the sense of like, how good are they in the average deck? I mean, it kind of is. You'll hear my explanation on what I think of the card overall. But when I rate the card, it is strictly based on the dopamine that I feel when I see a card. Because it's obviously not good in a lot of situations to take your fourth in flame plus. But that doesn't take away from the fact that when I see it, I kind of get a little horny. So that's basically how this tier list goes. You'll still hear my accurate explanation, so I think, definitely think it's worth listening to if you want to hear what I think about any particular card. Uh, and, and if you enjoy this kind of content, I really would appreciate it if you would uh, tell me in the comments and like the video because I am going to be doing an, an, uh, this, the, the defect on the day that this is uploaded. And... We're gonna we're gonna do multiple different ones, you know, uh, going forward. If you guys like this sort of thing, so thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Eldritch Blast. Hmm. Card number one in the alphabetical order is Anger. Now, Anger, very good on Act One, unless. You're going into something like Guardian, because Guardian does want more of uh, defensive cards against him. But against uh, against Slime Boss and against um, Hexaghost, even without something like an Evolve, flooding your deck uh, with, with with cards that just deal damage and allow you to smork a little bit versus uh, drawing into their, their status cards can be very, very good. And it's also really good with Bash, because I, I mean, how many turns on, on, on Act 1 do you draw into Bash Strike? And then if you just add that Anger, that's an extra 9 damage. It's kind of nuts, dude. Act 1, it's it's a it's a good take. Act 2, Act 3, I'm very rarely ever going to add an Anger. I mean, there's specific types of deck. But other than that, it's just not all that exciting, you know? It's, not, it's a decent card in Act 1. It's very good in Act 1. But outside of taking it in Act 1, I'm never excited to find an Anger. So... I would say in terms of dopamine, honestly, man, we actually need to add add in a D tier. I think it should be A, a, a B, C, D, F. But I think that I think the anger is, is a solid C tier. Are we going to consider the beta art for every card as well? We can. Do you guys want to do that? Because anger's beta art kind of fucking sucks. All right, moving on to armaments. Armaments. One of those cards. Very good to have one. Not very good to have more than one. Uh, people, I think, overvalue the upgrade of this card, where it, uh, it'll upgrade all of the cards in your hand for the rest of the combat, uh, instead of just one card. Because a lot of, a lot of, a lot of times, man, you're drawing, you're drawing four cards, you're probably, you're gonna draw four cards alongside this, you're probably gonna have a couple other cards in your hand that are already upgraded, like your bash pluses, you're gonna have your power pluses, maybe you got some events that got you upgraded cards and shit like that, maybe you took a molten egg, whatever the fuck. I think that... Then you're upgrading even less cards. It's only uh, going to give you five block for it. Whereas a lot of times in, in hallway fights, your deck isn't going to reshuffle enough times that you're going to get enough value out of the armaments plus. And normally, when you're, especially when you're on lower energy, you're really only going to be like, I'm going to upgrade this defend and then play this defend at the higher, uh, the higher block rate. And it's going to be super pongy. And it's not going to matter about upgrading all the other cards in your hand because you're just not going to use them throughout the fight. Also, taking multiple of these is obviously you know they have a very big diminishing value and as the fights go on uh it, the value of them go down i think that the value of upgrading armaments goes up if you have a lot of draw you have something like a battle trance or uh you know burning pack sneko eye things like that definitely can make the value go up but uh i i think that it's a a pretty meh card but i do i would say that it's 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 a little bit higher than anger for me because i wouldn't mind taking one later later in a run uh, so I'm going to take Armaments, and I'm going to say Armaments up there in the B tier. All right, moving on to Barricade. So Barricade obviously allows you to keep on your blocky walkie. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. Tristan, Barricade, S tier. I get horny when I see Barricade sometimes. I do. Very good card. Amazing card. But I think that it goes in A tier because of the fact that three cost powers early on in runs are so fucking clunky and require not just upgrade, but require things to go along with it. 
right? You need like uh, in, in Act Two, if you don't get an energy relic and upgrade barricade, it's gonna be very difficult to play barricade. A lot of times it's a curse, and a, a lot it's a very good late game card. It's a game winning card. Don't get me wrong, it is a game winning card. But in terms of horniness, in terms of serotonin, dopamine, rushing, it's only A tier, boys. It's gonna win you a run, but let's be real here. One in the chat, if you've taken a barricade, you've never played it, you go up like another 15 floors and you die because every single time you draw that barricade, it just kind of sits there lingering in that hand. Now, Bash, obviously not a card that you get to add to your deck. It's not. It comes standard. It comes standard in your deck when you get there, but adding vulnerable to characters fucking op bro do my chats already spamming s i think that that i thought that that would be a hot take if i came out here and said that bash is is an s tier card but it really just is man it's fucking nuts it's absolutely bonkies it's a must upgrade think of how many times you're playing through the spire and upgrading bash over anything else is just nuts uh, yeah, the upgrade also him killing slime boss, pretty poggy. I would say I'd get horny when I see it. You don't. That's the thing, though, is I don't get like the only time that you'll ever see it is in the matching game, right? And you see it and you're very rarely like, yes, let me add another one. But are you ever out here thinking about removing bash? Nah, you're like, dang, I like playing this all the time. Every time it comes into my hand, I'm like, yeah, that's like a consideration for a card that I want to use right now. Easily, we're going to slide on over here. Uh, and I know you guys are on you guys get you guys switch screens at a slight delay, but uh, yeah, we're, we're putting we're putting it up there next on the list We got battle trance battle trance is a card That I think is overvalued It's a great card. I mean free draw You gotta love it, but I feel like a lot of people take it early and then their deck starts to develop and their deck starts to get very reliant on cycling and they'll draw a Battle Trance as the first card in their hand. They'll have four of their cards. None of them draw. They play a Battle Trance and they draw into like Offering. And, and, and you draw into like Offering and, and Feel No Pain and a Dark Embrace. And you're just like, well, fuck me in the ass. So I do think that it sits in a, in, in a, in a high A tier because drawing four cards is cracked, right? You have a headbutt in your hand. It's cracked. When you see a Battle Trance on a run, whether you end up taking it or not, you're immediately just thinking of all the great times that you battle trance upgraded bashed fiend fired and you do 15 times seven right off the bat on like floor one of act two against the goddamn chosen motherfucker you know what i'm saying we all think of that moment it's like flashbacks battle trance also removing your artifact yes right like you just like you're like dang dude i can't wait to use this artifact shit against this big boss boy and then you're like battle trance uh well fuck What's the beta art of Battle Trance? <sighs> but yeah, I'm gonna put Battle Trance at A tier because again, we're trying to go off of our feeling. The feeling that we get whenever we see this card, whenever we take this card. And I do think the Battle Trance is up there in serotonin and in dopamine, right? We see it, we love it, whether we take it or not, whether we can analyze it and decide that it's bad in a lot of our decks. I feel like we all get very excited to see it. I don't get excited for Berserk. Now, it did recently get buffed, right? It did recently get buffed so that now it only gives you one vulnerable. So if you have it in your hand, if you have like a runic pyramid and you can play it on a specific turn, uh, if you have pellets, it's obviously can be very, very strong. Um, but still like drawing it just feels terrible unless you have a lot of draw. Having it bottled in your opening hand to play it against a lot of people who do setups on turn one, or maybe you have like a, a, an anchor or something on turn one to help you out blocking. Like it just doesn't, it just, it always feels undervalued. Even though Berserk sometimes is very good in your deck, I think more often than not, you're like, dang, dude, can't wait to get to the end of this boss. Find a Reaper to solid out my deck. Dang, dude, can't wait to get to this boss with that branch and find me a Corruption. Dang, dude, can't wait to get to this bot and get my 17th limit break so I can kill things on turn two again. And then you see a Berserk and you cry a little bit. So... For that reasoning, Berserk is gonna be the first card that I actually put into D tier. It's not F, because it's not always useless, but I fucking hate it. Next on the list, Blood for Blood. Blood for Blood. Overvalued card, kind of a good card. Though. Kind of kind of good art though. You're clinking glasses with the shopkeeper, kind of good. For when I see this card, I do get, I do get a little bit excited. And it's one of those act one steals, right? It's one of those act one cards that you see and you're like, okay, 
I could probably fight any elite, even at like 20 HP, and still have a solid shot if I draw Bash first, take some damage, swing it at one energy, and get two strikes along with it, it's probably going to be pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, do, I do think that it makes me happy to see, for one, but also like being realistic about like the... the the card actually being decent is I think that it's valuable to have a card like this, like this, or like Hemokinesis, like a Carnage, right? Those big heavy hitters that will get you through Act 1 that can then snowball your deck, but don't remain clunky later on, right? Like sometimes you see a Bludgeon on like Floor 1, you're like, dang, dude, this Bludgeon's kind of cracked, doing some good shit, but then it gets a little bit heavy later on into the run. Whereas a, a Carnage, you're like, okay, maybe if it's clunky, I just let it exhaust every single time, and then I don't have to draw on, on the second tier. And, and, and with Blood for Blood, it ends up costing zero and 22 damage for zero mana plus strength plus vulnerable. It, it, it's, it, it doesn't ever really feel that bad. We go down and we see Wound Strike, which at upgraded deals about the same amount of damage as an ununpgraded Blood for Blood. But later on in the run, it just feels clunky. It doesn't feel as good. It doesn't feel as much like I want to take it. I think that Blood for Blood just for its early game value and and for the fact that it it scales with the valueness of your deck and it, and it it doesn't scale in the sense of getting better later on but it doesn't get worse later on right i'm never hate I, I, there's not often i should say that i'm hating having it later on so i'm gonna put i'm gonna put it in a b tier boys all right bloodletting bloodletting a card that i son of a bitch a card what it looks like a looks like a banana or a high heel it's a card that I always want to make work. Uh, and very rarely do I get to. We were making it work in our last run because we had upgraded bites. But it's just not a card that I'm excited to see. And it never really often adds value to a deck. Because you need consistent draw off the bat in order to be able to have value of it. Otherwise, it just... Like, if you draw five cards a turn and none of them draw and one of them is bloodletting, like, most of the time, I'm just like, fuck, dude. I wish I didn't have this card. Offering is just so much better. I mean, yeah, for sure. Offering is insane. Yeah, it, it doesn't It doesn't get much play for me. I don't think it get much play for many people. Um, three, eight, like, it not going down in HP either. And it, like, getting redrawn. Because, like, losing three HP once in a while to uh, get a bunch of energy, I'm not against. But, like, I don't want to do it 17 times in a fight when I don't have consistent healing. What if it exo Then it's just the worst singing red. <laughs> I don't think it's super useless. I think it's kind of like uh, like double tap in the sense that like sometimes it'll work really well and sometimes it won't. I never see you pick this card. Yeah, I don't see many people pick this card. And that's why I think I'm going to put it at D tier. All right, next on the list is the big daddy boys. Oh, the beta art though. <laughs> the beta art, like one of the few beta arts that I don't have on simply because of how fucking gruesome it is <laughs> it is a fuck ton of damage 42 damage for three energy 63 damage with vulnerable it's crazy act one you're almost always gonna click on it act one it's it, it just wins you wins you elites you draw it on the turn after you you have bash boom dead gone am i taking it a lot late game no am i taking it a lot if i have sneko boom you got necronomicon massive right but it does require a little bit of energy management so I don't think that it can go S tier. A tier though? A tier though. Let's move on for now. Body slam. Is this slime boss about to slam his body? <laughs> body slam? Not gonna lie. Don't get excited that excited to see it. Except in those specific runs. I, 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 I don't get that excited to see it. Usefulness wise, it's either it's useful or it's not. And I know that that's like a, a shitty statement to say, but that's literally what it is when you see it it's either op and broken in your deck or it's useless like it's very rarely that you're like ah this could deal moderate amount of damage in my deck <laughs> you know it's either this is gonna one shot absolutely everyone or it's going to just scale with my strength which is going to be good late but my strikes will be better than that so i think that it, it doesn't it, it's very good in its points where it's very good but it's very bad in its points where it's very bad. It just doesn't have that middle ground. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I think where like the excitement tends to die off. It's exciting when I need it. So I think that it goes at top of B tier. I think it does. Simply for the fact that it's very rarely needed. You know what I'm saying? Very rarely is it needed. Moving along. 
Body slam, we're going to do brutality. Brutality. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, brutality, I think is is good. I think it is. Do I think it's great? Let me explain. I think brutality is up there with like tools of the trade in terms of uh, value. When it's innate, it's decent. But adding it as an innate card, when you have no way to mitigate damage on turn one, makes it so that I can't, uh, I can't, I have a less likelihood of drawing things that are gonna make it so I don't take damage on turn one. Does it work with Tungsten Rod? Yes. And then it, if it works with Tungsten Rod, it also won't work with, with Rupture if you have Tungsten Rod, um, I think. I'm pretty sure. At least it didn't when it first came out. I've heard rumors of changes, but I, I've never been able to confirm it myself. Oh, wait, I don't, because I, I just haven't gotten it recently. Again, I'm, I've come back to this game after a year of playing, and I know they've changed things. Uh, and it's people have argued whether it would work or not, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't. I'm never really excited to have a brutality. There's often times where it's very good. If I see one outside of a boss fight, I'm inclined to take it. It does do, it does, it does work out in longer fights. It does. It adds up to value. The reason why I don't like it uh, in, in, in hallway fights is because a lot of hallway fights will end in a certain amount of turns. And the value that brutality has is like, in order to play brutality, you have to draw brutality, right? So when you, when you draw brutality, you're not drawing the card that you would last turn. And then when brutality draws you one extra card the next turn, it's just drawing you the card that it would have drawn if you didn't have brutality. So you actually have to draw brutality, get it off, then do two more turns, and then you get to a new card. Then you get to the value of having brutality. So it has to go two more turns in advance. And if it's not upgraded and it's not innate, then it might be in the last card of your deck. And then by the time that you actually get to the value of it, you've already won the fight, right? Um, and, 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 you know, but Rupture can work well with it and it can scale with your strength. And like, so, you know, sometimes it'll proc like the fucking self forming clay. There's a billion reasons why it's good. And I do think that it has value. And I think that taking cards specifically for boss fights to give you more options in boss fights, I think is phenomenal. And I think it is something that you should definitely look at taking. Um, like for instance, I think Dark Embrace. Dark Embrace is an, another example of a good card that isn't going to get super amounts of value in a lot of hallway fights. But in boss fights, it's going to be enough to, to make or break your run. I think it's a high B tier card as well. You guys agree or disagree? Burning Pact. Ooh, we got to a juicy one, boys. I don't... He's just... Burning Pact is an amazing card. Early on in a run, it's not amazing. Because draw usually early on in a run isn't that good, right? Like, are you going to take 17 Cool Headeds on, floor, on Act 1? Probably not. Are you going to take four Burning Packs on Act 1? Probably not. But am I going to take three Burning Packs as, like, some of my last cards? Yes. I get very excited to see a Burning Pact. Because a lot of times later in a run, you're going to have more energy. Where you can use Draw to find the things that you really want to play and still have the energy to be able to play them. But another thing that Burning Pact does that is very, very good is someone actually asked me yesterday is, why is True Grit a good card? Right? Why is getting rid of cards in your deck, why is purposefully wanting to get rid of a card in your deck good? If I'm in a boss fight, and I have three strikes left in my deck and also a sword boomerang. And then I have a bunch of cards that are gonna be able to deal with blocking and, 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 and you know, vulnerabling this guy and you know, setting it up, gaining strength, whatever. Being able to get those cards out of your cycle, even if you don't have a bunch of wound stuff. I know you guys are obviously looking at wounds right now and, and thinking about status cards. I'm, th I'm thinking literally just thinning out your deck so that you can cycle better and in a longer fight, have a higher chance of drawing into your better cards more often is insane. And, and you know, oftentimes, like like I was talking about here, right? I did, we were just playing a run where we had two upgraded burning packs and a dark embrace in our deck. And if I drew a burning pack with my dark embrace in a, in a hallway fight, bro, I'm just gonna burning pack my useless power because this power isn't gonna get any value, it isn't gonna get any large margin of value off for the rest of the fight. So I might as well use it as a target to draw into better cards to win this fight faster and save myself HP. And obviously we can talk about, you know, yes, getting rid of wounds. I think that it's good. Cross Prime has solved world hunger. Obviously, it's really good if you can combo it with your wound cards. Now, here's the thing. Don't get caught in a noob trap. Don't get fucking caught in a noob trap, all right? 
if you have two uh, fucking burning packs and a true good in your deck, don't start going out there and being like, all right, that means that I can take the fucking Mark of Pain and add two wounds to my deck. No, it sucks still. Stop. I think I think that Burning Pact is A tier. Legitimately do. All right, can we just put Carnage in S tier? Because I fucking love this card. <laughs> I have an infatuation with Carnage. I very much like this card. This card is what got me to start saying the term meat stick. Because literally, this is just a pile of meat. And it's just fucking meat stick, boys. It's just absolutely crazy. Meat sticks are very good early in the game. They can be good late in the game too, but they're very, very good in the early game. But this two energy versus that versus that uh, bludgeon's three energy is crazy. Is super good. And you're like, yeah, but it's ethereal, so it can make you start a logavool and fight a little bit sooner than you might want to, or it can uh, you might not ha you might like you know be sneko eyeing and not have enough energy, and then you lose a high damage card. Don't get me wrong. I understand. It's got the uh, uh, the ethereal. But I think that it is still, in my opinion, I'm going to rate it above bludgeon. Literally for the 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 energy, lack of energy. It's free block with feel no pain. Yeah, and so that's, that's what I wanted to get around to, too, is like later in the game in boss fights, when it's not nearly as useful, when the, when the enemy has like, you know, 250, 420 max HP, it's obviously not as useful. But guess what, man? Let it exhaust. And you don't draw it again. And then, obviously, you drew it that once, so it could be bad that one time around. But I think ethereal, ethereal, whatever the fuck you say, is good enough. It is good in boss fights for just letting a card dip. Because I, oh, I, I did put bludgeon in eight tier. So I think I'm gonna put it up there. I think, I think it goes. I think, I think if we order it, we're gonna go like this. If we're counting like high eight tier over here, we're definitely ordering like this. The, the meat stick cards are lower for sure. All right, Clash. So what we're going to do here, chat, is we're actually going to... Meet. All right, Cleave. I think that without Reptomancer existing, Cleave is B tier. But I think with Reptomancer existing... I think Cleave is A tier. I think Cleave is a fantastic, fantastic card. Literally, without Reptomancer existing, I wouldn't take this past Act 1. But past Act 1, I'm going to take it. At worst, it's just a better strike. Yeah, and at the most, it's literally like 11... What is, what is 11 times... 11 times 5? 55 damage in a fight against Robo Bitch. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be like taking a thousand of them. But because Reptomancer exists, I get excited seeing this card. <laughs> why is Snack Lady a Robo Bitch? I don't know why I started calling her Robo Bitch, but I started and I can't stop. What's the beta art? Uh, it's the it's the regular art. What eight bit? I think the Cleave is A tier because Whirlwind is so fucking bad, and the Ironclad doesn't have a lot of good other well uh regularly seen AOE. You uh AOE effects. So yeah, I think I think that because of that, because of like the lack of other cards, and because of Reptomancer existing, I'm putting Cleave in eight there. Come at me, boys. Alright, clothesline. It's like Bash, except it adds weak. And you want to know what weak does, chat? It doesn't let me hit them harder. Therefore, B tier. <laughs> like it's a it's a great card, don't get me wrong. But am I going to add it to my deck all the time outside of Act 1? Not really. Right? I don't really even get excited seeing it in Act 1. Like, I only get ex Like, I don't get excited seeing it, but I take it because when I have something bashed, it does more damage than if I use bash again. And the beta art is, like, really hard to look at. But I just don't think it does anything super special. And it's like, I would rather just find, like, 17... Like 17 uppercuts, because uppercut is just fantastic comparatively. So yeah, we're, we're we're throwing it we're throwing it low into the B tier. All right, combust. Looks like he's the 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 flame tower from from Loon's tower defense. Um, combust. I think is great. I think is phenomenal. It does so much in so many fights. I don't get excited to take more than one. I mean, the damage ramp is good. But having to draw a bunch and play a bunch, it's obviously costing me health. It's, you know, I'm not, I'm not drawing other things. I think Combust is fantastic. 
The only time that it is super bad is one, in Multitudes, but two, in Centennial Puzzle. And Centennial Puzzle is a relic that I feel like we all get enough that we take a combust, then we get Centennial Puzzle, and we're just like, ah, shit. <laughs> I think combust. I Would I say that it's S tier? I don't think it is because you can't take a bunch of them and just like kind of pop off on it. But I do think that it is very good. And I think I'm going to put it above the status card or above the big meat sticks in A tier. Now, Corruption. <sighs> I know everyone out there. I know what you're thinking. Corruption is S tier. A hundred percent, Tristan. Corruption is great. And it makes so many decks phenomenal. But if you find it early in the game, it's just going to be a curse. If you take it and you don't have enough spells in your deck, you're just going to die to the heart. You're going to, or you're, gonna, you're even going to die to like fucking time eater. And you're going to die to, you're going to die to a bunch of different things. Cause you just get rid of your entire deck and you're sit there like, ah, shit. I have pommel strike and bash. <laughs> so it can make your deck. But I think that oftentimes, if you don't get it at the like precise right time, it is gonna ruin your deck. I don't I think it's I think it's easily one of the most powerful effects in the game. It is. Easily. I think it's better than Wrath. I don't think it's better than Divinity. <laughs> but I think it's one of the most powerful effects in the entire game. But there's a reason why it's called corruption and it's this you know, this negative name and whatnot. And I think it's because it, uh, yeah, it, it, it easily can hurt your deck. So I just, I think that it does go at the top, the tippity top of A tier, but it's not S tier. And I think, I think that's okay. Cause I think reserving S tier for very specific cards is good. What about when, un when corruption was an uncommon card? S tier. <laughs> Dark Embrace. You know, recently, recently I've been getting a lot of good value out of Dark Embrace. Chat, help me out. How do I explain this? It's a card. It is a card. Thank you. It's very situational. Sure. Yeah. I, I think I think that's what it is. It's extremely situational. Because, like, even if you have just, like, three really good dis, uh, dis, uh, exhaust cards in your deck, I'm really not going to want it. Yeah, it's like Body Slam. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's really not that good. It's hard for me to explain it. Normally, I'm very articulated on what I think about things. But not right now. Not on this card. It's kind of fucking me up. I think that I'm going to throw it in the B tier. There's so many cards in A tier because there's so many good cards in the game. Tier lists don't have to be balanced, man. All right, demon form, boys. Should we we should do defend. We should we should we should take defend and I think defend goes in F tier. All right. Demon form. Great beta art. And if you look at this right chat, this right here is just a really fat dump trunk of an ass. Similar to the grandma robot in the robot movie. Aunt Fanny. Yeah. I think demon, t demon form is obviously a noob trap. I don't think anyone's ever disputed that fact. Let's look at it in the hallway fights. You can't make it bottled. I mean, other without, you know, without the bottling card. But let's for the, we're not going to consider bottling a thing here because it's an uncommon relic that you don't get often. Say it's in the bottom of your deck every single time because it always is. Right? And then the next turn, you get two strength. <gasps> or three strength if it's upgraded, Tristan, right? What if you have Mummified Hand, another rare relic to see? Yeah, okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> not going to give you a lot of value outside of a lot of boss fights. Really not. I think that it is oftentimes taken and that you never get, you never get to use it. It's awkward to play without something like Sneko Eye or a lot of energy all the time because even like oh i have energy like yeah but you might have like ways to get energy but like does that always happen on the term that you have demon form no um would it be op at two cost it would be broken as fuck at two cost yes i just had just had five energy max and it felt awkward to use because i had other cards i wanted to use exactly what i'm saying is demon form isn't that good okay we're gonna move on <laughs> i didn't think i'd be that hard to articulate where would i put demon form high c all right i'll put it at high c boys it do kind of have that fruit fun flavor. Disarm. Can we all agree S tier? Just one in the chat if we agree S tier. 
Let's just do that. It's fucking great. Okay, but if you use it without the beta art, though, if you use it without the beta art, it goes with Clash. You guys all have to tell me right now that as soon as you unlock the beta art for the Ironclad, you will turn on Disarm and never turn it off. Make it sure. It is far too good. It is amazing. If I do actually need to give some sort of an explanation, uh, it is like having Metallicize, right? Where you get three block every single turn, technically infinitely, if a creature decides that they want to do a multi-attack. And it's for the rest of the fucking fight. That's nuts. That's crazy. It beats the heart. Yeah, it literally does. You have like two of these and an exhum in your deck? Done. I'll kill it. Let me at him. Like, it's fucking broken. It's so good. It's amazing. There's not many cards in the in the game that you're like, that doesn't do well into slime boss, but I'm still going to take it on floor one. Double tap. Great beta art. I want to say this before we get into sh uh, shitting on double tap. I'm going to do a lot of it. I'm going to rinse this card. Get it rinsed because it's like, it's sync. Okay. But it's, it's fantastic beta art. Definitely moves it up an entire tier. Is it a good card though? No, <laughs> it really isn't, man. And I know, dude, every single time I'll have like a fucking immolate in my deck, right? I'll have a 20 card deck going into the act one boss. I'll have an immolate and I'll see a double tap after the act one boss. And there's always someone in chat that says, but double tap immolate. Do the math of how, what, what is the percentage that my first time drawing, first time through drawing my cards. I'm gonna draw double tap and immolate on the same on the same turn with with 21 cards in my deck drawing five cards a turn. We have no draw on our deck. 9.3%, 10%, somewhere around 10%. 10% of the time, 10%. And it's only gonna get worse as you get more cards in your deck. Because bro, do you know the amount of times that you're just gonna draw double tap and then play two strikes? And then the next card on the top of your deck is a strike. So then when you draw, when 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 you when you when the next turn you're just gonna draw the card that you would have played anyways and then it was a waste of a draw and it was terrible it's pretty bad man all i'm gonna say is it's pretty bad are there situations where it's fantastic oh yeah you got snekawai and a bunch of fatty cards oh just toss it in there because like when you drawing seven cards a turn one of them being dog shit doesn't matter but on the one time that you have a double tap plus and an immolate and bludgeon in your hand and you just one shot any boss. Yeah, it's poggy. Don't get me wrong. It can be. When you got double tap and you got sword boomerang, poggy. But you wanna know what is a better version of double tap? Cause it can also double tap your powers. I think that the energy increase that you're gonna be willing to pay for a dual wield is far better than then double tap because you're like oh but if i have a one cost sword boomerang and i double tap it it only costs me two energy where if i want to play multiple sword boomerangs it's going to cost me more than two energy right but this is also good for i mean we're going to get to double tap we're going to get to dual wield in a minute but yeah let, 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 let's rate double tap this fucking horrendous garbage card this might be mean to put it in d tier but i'm going to but then because of the beta art, it gets bumped up to C tier. <laughs> Dropkick as a, as a decent art. Uh, Dropkick, I think I take far too often than I should. Because Dropkick, when it's good, feels great, right? It It is amazing. It, it just feels so fun to use. But when you draw it along with three strikes in your first hand, Dang, dude, that avocado's dealing 21. <laughs> it can be infinite, therefore C. I think it's infinite, therefore D, and not getting F tier. Because it's any card that can literally be the, the, the same cost as a strike, but deal less damage than a strike, I think automatically should go into F tier. Are there decks where it can be useful? Sure. But are there plenty of decks where you fucking hate drawing this card? Yeah. Do you get excited to see this card? No. <clears throat> now dual wheel. 
we get back to talking about dual wield. We were just having a great conversation over there. We were just having a great conversation over there. Dual wield is so good that it makes double tap talkable about because we could talk about dual wield. It's like double tap, but better. And let me explain why. Because uh, the obvious argument against it is energy increase, right? Is is you're going to be paying more energy. Um, one, it is fucking fantastic with powers. The fact that you could use it on powers is nasty. Now, is it worth taking all the time? No. I don't take it often. I don't take it often. But when I do take it, it usually pops off. If I have Sneko Eye, whoo, we taking that shit, dude. Because do you know how many times you'll just like rinse an enemy? Because you can draw it on the same turn as a zero cost attack, and that zero cost attack becomes nuts. What's the beta? It's double apple, boys. In those long fights where I'm then going to redraw into that sword boomerang, having three that I could draw into, it just increases your odds of drawing good cards. It's the same argument of like exhausting cards is really good because it increases the odds that you draw your good cards, right? Dual wheel does the same thing. It is also good if you have a very power heavy deck. If you have something like Juggernaut, if you have uh, um, like Sneko Eye, dude, you got Sneko Eye in demon form. That's the point where we could bump demon form up a tier. Holy balls, dude. Me gaining nine strength a turn, big dual wield absolutely pop me off is it good enough that i get excited about it all the time i think so i think that it gets i get excited about it often enough do i take it though a lot no so i don't think it can go in a tier because of that so i think i'm gonna put it at, a, at like a medium high b tier i think i think dual wields up there where it's kind of that situational shit where it get makes or breaks your run if you take it and it's not super good it's just clunky but if you take it dude and it takes you, it's like when she, when you're nut and she keeps on sucking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've had sex. Anyways, Entrench. Entrench just goes directly next to Body Slam. Agreed. Agreed entirely. I do think that Entrench has increased value um, with Runic Pyramid, but then you could also have the same argument about, about Body Slam. Runic Pyramid, save it for your fucking, your, your, uh, your, your, your impervious turns. Boom. Yeah. I, I, I do value Entrench a little bit lower than Body Slam, I'd say. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's worse. Maybe it's maybe we should just fuse them on the tier list and they'd be in the same spot. I do think Entrench is insane. The reason I'm going to put it lower is because of its starting cost. Body Slam starting cost? Not that big of a headache. Really fun to upgrade. But Entrench? Clunky. What's the beta art for Entrench? I don't think it's anything special. He's just a guy making a trench, working hard in his life. A lot of times in early act one, I'll find an evolve and I click on it immediately because it can make your run, right? It is a it is a card that you can take early on and then just be like, all right, this is the way. This is how we're doing this run. It, it powers up some cards in your deck so fucking well. Like literally, I think because power through exists, Power through exists, therefore evolve as Pongi. And we'll get to power through in a minute and why I think power through is good or bad. But I just, I, I think evolve is so fucking good. I think evolve is fantastic. There are so many fights in the game that will add, that will add statuses into your deck and you just rinse them to pieces because of this one little fucking card that otherwise might make that, that sentries fight in act one. Oh, it literally just makes sentries easy. It literally just makes the Chosen easy. I'm putting it in an S tier because it is one of... It's not a card that I'm always going to add to my deck. No. But it always carries value. Anyways, Exhum. Exhum's an exciting-ass card. I don't think anyone's going to argue that it's A or S tier. I think where the argument is, is is it an S tier or is it an A tier? You have one, uh, one disarm in your deck. Poggy. Like, literally, Exhum... The, the, let, let me explain this. Exhum duplicates every exhaust card in your deck, right? If I have a disarm, and I find another disarm, I've duplicated my disarms, right? If I have a Reaper, and I find another Reaper, I've duplicated my Reapers. But if I have a Reaper, a disarm, a Shockwave, and then I find 
an exhum. I have effectively duplicated all three of those cards. Now, obviously not all at the same time, but it's that effective duplication that is nuts. Every time I have a good exhaust deck and I have, a, I have like three exhumes in my deck, someone in the comments is like, wait a minute. Can't you just exhum and exhum and have a feel no pain and get infinite block? They took that out of the game a very long time ago. You cannot exhum and exhum. The exhum is S tier. It is not a card that you're taking first and then hoping to get a bunch of good stuff. But when you see it and you already have something poggy, it is poggy. Like, dude, look, look, look at the card right next to it. Look at the next one in the list. Feed. All Americans just rated, uh, rated feed S tier. <laughs> I saw a couple people in chat saying that feed deserves its own tier. Is it S tier? 100 million percent. I think if we're going to order S tier, I think it's going to be... I think Bash is probably like one of the lowest. Oh no. Thank you for giving me another opportunity, Goldfish. Why is Feed not in its own tier? That's where Exhum comes in, because Exhum can be multiple feeds, but it doesn't have to be. Taking multiple feeds, usually bad. Taking Feed super late into the game, kind of sucky. If I'm in the middle of Act 3, and I just defeated my last elite for the entire act, and I see a feed, and I'm like, well, fuck, man. That just reset my rare percentage? And it's on a fucking feed? Feed's great. One of the best cards. But it does have its situation where it's not good. Feel no pain? I know a lot of people are going to say S tier. Because it's very similar to Exhum in the sense that it is an exhaust enhancer. And a lot of times, exhaust cards are better than normal cards, right? There's a reason why we're only allowed to use them once. They're better. And making cards that are better, better, kind of good. The block is kind of though, low though, late in the game. No, I think that the block is better late in the game because it's kind of like uh, if you're if you're running like an exhaust style deck, it, it is it is kind of like uh, like finding a footwork. <laughs> almost right it's just that much better and because it's separate block it procs with juggernaut extremely well but i just i i, I get excited to see a feel no pain but i just can't say that it's s tier i can't maybe i'm wrong on that i think it's one of the best a tier cards i think it, i think it's top of a tier man that's my opinion here i think it's top of a tier but it just doesn't have that spice in it for me to make it b tier or for make it S tier. I could understand if you guys put it S tier. That, that, I'll say that. I, I, I'm not gonna, you know? I think it's up to the individual at the end of the day. And yeah. Now Fiend Fire though. That's a, that's, a, that's a very good card. That is a butt nasty, super good card. I think 60 damage is, is pretty good. Scaling with my strength. I think that Fiend Fire is absolutely phenomenal. It says exhaust three times. Just think of how powerful this card is. I think it synergizes with so many things. It synergizes with feel no pain. It synergizes with dark embrace. It synergizes with the general thought of exhausting. It's a fantastic, uh, excuse me, finisher. I'm going to say S tier. Again, we're welcome to disagree. That's okay. But I think that it is a beautiful card. Definitely deserves S tier. Very nice sound effect. Clip and ship it. Fire breathing, fat man. Thank you, for Thank you very much. Fire breathing, fat man. <laughs> hey there, Fox. Love your content. Love the streams where I can get on. Thank to you, fat man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the 22 months. Chat's annoying the shit out of me. Dreadmore. Thank you for the follow. Um, can you rank both the new and the old fire breathing? I mean, old fire breathing's below clash. Uh, new fire breathing. It's not terrible, but it's bad, and so. I New fire breathing isn't new fire breathing is, is D tier. No, it's F tier. It's actually it's so garbage. It's so bad. <laughs> okay, I'll throw it in D tier. I, I, I won't be that mean. Cause the it does have it's good at that. That's that's pretty good. It's it's really bad. It's very bad. Because you have to draw it, you have to play it, and then you have to draw other things. And if you're drawing other things. The thing is, is like, I think a lot of times it's compared to Evolve, right? They make you feel better about taking your bad decisions, but it's still a pretty bad decision. You know what I'm saying? 
it can deal a lot of damage and it can have and i think it's per the perfect analogy is to say it's going out day drinking a lot of times they're gonna be like dang dude i just did 50 damage in a fight because i drew five wounds poggy woggy and i feel like a lot of times people take a fire breathing and then they're like, all right, dude, now it's time to take Wound Strike. Now it's time to take uh, Mark of Pain. And it, I, it's... All right, Flame Barrier. That's an A-tier, boys. That's a high A-tier card. That's just crack. That's a, just a busted-ass card. 17 fights in the fucking game. It beats Birdos. It beats The Heart. It beats Stabby Book. It beats... My... It, I would... It is so good. <laughs> It is a very good card to see. I get extremely excited when I see it. I'm going to put it all the way up here in A tier, dude. All right. Uh, F tier, garbage. All right, cool. <laughs> Flex is bad. Let's just say that. All right. Flex is really bad. We'll go over it. If you draw it and you use it and you get two strength with your two other strikes that you drew in your hand... That's four extra damage that turn. And then you take 25 damage. Or, like, why would you draw flex? Why would you play flex in your in your, in your your deck when instead you could just take spot weakness? Now you're like, Tristan, that's a common card. Those other cards are not common. They're uncommon. But it's just not... I, I don't know how to explain this. Drawing things in your game is is very important does it have its place to be good yeah runic pyramid can make it decent um runic pyramid plus like a fiend fire something like that don't get me wrong it's not terrible if you have pellets pellets it all of a sudden can become nuts um yeah if you got some type of artifacts sure yeah there's situations where it can become good but bro one in the chat if when you started playing this game you took this card non-stop because you thought it was going to be fucking nuts and it was a noob trap and we all hate it now and now it deserves f tier for all the fucking lost runs that it's caused us i think it's a bigger noob trap than demon form yeah and, and again there's there's places where it can be good there's places where every card in this entire game that's the beauty of slay the spire so i love this game is because the, it's not like hearthstone or other card games where cards phase in and phase out of being good there's just some cards that if they're lower down on this tier list it usually just means it's harder to make good. That's kind of what we're getting at here. Moving on. Ghostly Armor. Ghostly Armor is just a solid card. Is it anything incredible? No. Am I going to take it when I have a Corruption Feel No Pain deck? Yeah, I need more fucking cards. Or right? I say I hate or the thought of running out of spells. The Ethereal, pretty good if I got a Feel No Pain and I just don't have the shit to do it. The card itself, probably one of the most underrated arts in the entire game. Beta art is like incoherent scribble. But that art right there, <laughs> it's never going to be like anger, for instance. I think anger is a good example of you put it in your deck early and then it sucks later because you never want to play it. So you don't flood your reshuffle with more angers so that you can continue to draw your better cards, right? But you're never really that sad about drawing your ghostly armor. But I think because the ironclad values bashing his face into things more than he does casually defending things, I think it's B tier. I'll put it high up here. I'll put it like right there. But I think it's B tier. Just because the Ironclad tends to value smacking more than blocking. Havoc is a baby version of one of chat's favorite cards. Their favorite card being Mayhem. Chat loves Mayhem. But Havoc's decent. Because a lot of times you can... The, 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 the Ironclad has, you know, things like Headbutt to manipulate things. It can be a way to get off your uh, expensive powers is to headbutt and Havoc something. I will say, Havoc, unupgraded. <sighs> but upgraded, though. That's a hot card. Is it always a card that I'm going to take? Oh, no. For, sh for heavens, no. Heavens, no. Because a lot of times, you know, if you have one impervious in your deck, I, I don't want to just accidentally play this out of nowhere. If I've got a feed in my deck, I don't want to play that out of nowhere. If I've got a, a, a limit break in my deck and I haven't played my strength cards yet, I don't want to play that out of nowhere and put it into the cycle when it might have next turn drawn with my stuff, right? I don't want to kill myself with an offering, but usually having an offering if you're managing your shit well is pretty good. It, it's, it's, it's a good card, but I think that people oftentimes take it because you can play things for free at zero cost, but 
if we're going off of that feeling of like, is it hard to use? Yes. Am I gonna take it often? No. I think it's I think it's C tier. Headbutt's good. Headbutt Headbutt is one of the very few ironclad common basic strike plus kind of cards, right? We always talk about these cards that are strike pluses. They just do a little bit more damage than a strike, plus a little bit, right? It's one of the few that I would take at the end of Act 3. One of the very few, I think, that headbutts I love you, Frosty pretty good. And Chet, I am taking now we get to a controversial card, Chet. We get to a controversial card. Heavy Blade. This wants to deal 28 damage. In order... Let's even fucking say it's upgraded. If we're upgrading Carnage, we're going to upgrade this. In order for that to happen, you would need three strength, right? I don't even know why I have the calculator out. We can do this in our head. We need three strength in order for it to deal as much damage as a Carnage. And so that means that before we draw Heavy Blade, we need to somehow get our strength in play. But if we don't have our strength in play, every other card in the game... For the Ironclad, that costs two, does better. Every other card. The only other card that doesn't deal more damage is Bash. That I can think of off the top of my head. Pro chat's probably going to... Even Clothesline? Clothesline does the same amount of damage as Heavy Blade, plus Weakening. So it's better. And then Carnage does 31 with that strike. That's actually true. With that three strength, Carnage does 31. And then this only does 29. So you technically need four strength in order to deal it. So you need an upgraded spot weakness, two turns of an unupgraded demon form, two turns of demon form in general. You need two inflames. You need an inflame plus limit break. You need so much to get there for it to be a more valuable card at its energy standpoint, where then you look at a common card that is compared to it, Sword Boomerang, which deals more damage than a strike off the bat. It's up there with all the other strikes. Right off the bat. And even then, Sword Boomerang, when you have no strength, kind of sucks. It feels bad to play. It feels kind of shit. Because again, it doesn't do other things like Headbutt might. Carnage is uncommon, however, yes. But I can take a Carnage before I see any strength in my deck. I'm not going to take a Heavy Blade. I got two fingers pointing to this shit. Don't make me get a third. I did it. It requires too much. It costs too much. Can it be good? Sure. There are plenty of times where it's going to be a great card in your deck. But this card only scales one strength better than two strikes. Or two, or a headbutt and an iron wave. Does that make sense? Because they're both two, ma they're both two mana. So it's technically scaling for two mana. You're getting times two strength. But this is getting times three. So what I'm trying to get at is, is it's, it can be great in a long-term fight to one-shot something, right? But you want to know what can also be good in a long-term fight to one-shot something? Every other card in the fucking game. And so that's why I rate Heavy Blade very, very low. And I think it goes into low, low C tier. Hemo Kinesis. They buffed this card recently. And they shouldn't have. Holy fuck is this card broken as shit. The best smorking card, single target that the Ironclad has. Because again, dude, we're looking at energy efficiency. Even unupgraded, unupgraded chat. This has a better energy efficiency than Bludgeon and Carnage when they're upgraded. It does more damage than Heavy Blade. <laughs> Fuck you, Heavy Blade. Okay. Um, it does more damage than Heavy Blade. Early on in the game, I can play it on the same turn that I draw Bash. It's really fucking good. Literally just to be able to play it on the same turn as Bash on Act 1 when I don't random randomly get some sort of energy upgrade is phenomenal. How fucking depressing is it, chat, to have a Carnage in your deck and you draw it on the same turn or a Bludgeon in your deck or a Clothesline or an Uppercut and you draw it on the same turn on Act 1 against Gremlin Knob as your other two damage high, high cost, or uh, two damage... Are two two energy high damage card. 
It feels terrible. But hemokinesis. Boom. It is phenomenal. Am I going to take it late into the game? No. Probably not. All right, immolate, buddy. <laughs> it's, just, it's so fucking OP, dude. <laughs> it's so fucking broken. This shit is fucking nuts, dude. I had someone the other day tell me that they can never seem to get immolate to work and that it's bad. It is insane. It is carnage against everyone. Doesn't exhaust if you don't play it. All it does is add a measly burn to your deck, which normally we're like, dude, adding those things to your deck are so bad, right? For the simple fact that most of the time that you play Immolate, you're not going to be drawing that burn because the thing that you're attacking is fucking dead. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. It's going up there. Sorry, it's taking a really long time for me to tab out on the stream. I think it goes right there. I don't think I need to explain why Impervious is good. <laughs> Infernal Blade sucks balls. Even upgraded? Even upgraded, man. Why would you want a card that can give you Clash and Heavy Blade? <laughs> why would I want a card in my deck that can give me a card that I could have already added to my deck? All right, Inflame. One of the best arts in the entire game. I don't know why. Something about this is just beautiful to me. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. Not as good. If we're going off of our original goal here, which was to rate cards based on when we see them, how much of a dopamine rush we get, Inflame is high A tier. Because holy shit. When I see an Inflame, do I get happy? Whether it's good in my deck or not, I get happy, right? When is it not good? Uh, when you, you know, too many powers going into Woke Bloke. Um, when it, it's just too many in general. Because, like, the thing is, is when you have four inflames in your deck, you could potentially on one turn draw four inflames. <laughs> and then intimidate. Fucking sucks. Putting it in F tier, boys. In intimidate? The only time, the only time I get excited to see Intimidate is when I have Dead Branch. I would almost put it in Clash tier. No, I wouldn't because of Dead Branch. Because of Dead Branch and like the rare case that I get like a Dark Embrace bottled, I might take one. But yeah, most of the time. Good card to remove Artifact. All right, if you add an Intimidate to your deck and then you get to the heart, you didn't need your Intimidate in your deck. Iron Wave is a very good upgraded card, but not that great non-upgraded. You're never excited, to t unless it's upgraded, right? Unless you have the ability to upgrade it somehow. You're never excited to take it in, in Act 1, and you're never really excited to take it anytime after that, too. Iron Wave, I, I wouldn't rate that highly. I'd probably put it, I'd honestly probably put it, like, with Anger. It's not a bad card, but it's like a dash minus from the Silence. It's just not that good. Now, Juggernaut, though. Jugger. <laughs> it's the scene from the X-Men Last Stand movie. <laughs> Juggernaut is a fantastic card. The only negative of it is its cost, but it's a very solid card. And I don't think that you take it all the time, but you're excited to see it when you're excited to see it. I think that Juggernaut goes in the A tier with Barricade and Corruption for the simple fact that all three of them together make a very solid deck. Now, if we're just talking about how excited we get when we see a card, oh, boy. <laughs> limit Break goes in Boner tier. Yeah, Limit Break is limit breaks up there, man. Definitely going to toss it up here. But to toss it up here at, like, speed. I do think the Disarm is still my favorite card in, in Ironclad so far. Is it an S, though? Early, I don't nut for it. Yeah, oh, yeah. If you have no strength in your deck, it's terrible. Don't get me wrong. But we're talking about what we think is the best cards when we see them. Like, when we see it, you can't tell me you don't see a limit breaker. They're like, whoa. Oh. Metallicize. <sighs> Metallicize is weird. You are purposefully taking an unupgraded strike. Or an un un unupgraded defend. Right? Because the turn that you play it gives you less block than a defend. And then, you know, slowly throughout the fight, it scales infinitely in value. But it's just not all that exciting to see. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you do eventually, like, scale mega throughout the fight. And if you can get them all off before, you know, a big turn and you get a bunch of free block. I wish they would buff it to make, make it plated armor. Are you insane? So, yeah. I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it in C tier. And that might be a controversial opinion. But I put it at the top of C tier. When it works, it's really good. But oftentimes, man, it's just lackluster. And then you take it with, like, the thought of upgrading it. And then the next fight, you get a card that's better to upgrade. And then it sits at only giving you three block a turn. And it takes, you know, three turns to really get any value. Offering. S tier. We agree? I'm going to put it below Disarm because I like Disarm more. Because the beta art is Pongi. And look at, look at Offering's beta art. Ew. Perfected Strike. F tier. Perfected Strike. I say goes to the top of F tier. Literally, dude, I don't think you guys realize. This card has six base damage on it for two mana. What? At the start of the game, when you have five strikes in your deck, do the math. How much damage does that do, chat? 16. 16 damage. And what do you like to do throughout the run? Get rid of your strikes. You like to get rid of your strikes. You're right. It's 18. Because if you are about to take an elite fight, like the next floor is an elite fight on act one, and you don't have a big smorky card or a big smorky potion, I'm putting that in my deck so that I can defeat Gremlin up. I ain't putting a clash in my deck unless it's Slay the Streamer. And you're like, oh, but you can make a deal so much by adding more strikes to your deck. Yeah, but if you add more strikes to your deck, then you have more strikes in your deck. Like if you start flooding your deck, with twin strikes and pommel strikes and more perfected strikes. Pommel strike. That's a solid ass card. Pommel strike is a solid ass card. Unupgraded pommel strike, act one, first couple of floors, throw it in the deck, right? High energy late game, upgraded with molten, molten egg, throw it in the deck, man. You're getting, okay, uh, draw, draw in, in Slay the Spire is a weird thing, right? If it's drawing one card, it's just drawing the card that you would have drawn next turn, right? Because this is a game where you discard your entire hand and draw the next, right? So you're, it's it's just kind of cycle, right? And if you don't have a lot of energy, Hummel Strike does lose value because you're just drawing into a card that you would have already drawn. And usually if you have low energy and you're playing a Pommel Strike, you're, you're not gonna be able to play the new thing plus all the other things in your hand and it gets a little fucky wucky. It's a strike with a little bit more text plus a little bit more damage. Poggy, right? In late game, it just helps you kind of get through your deck faster, especially if it's upgraded. Like it doesn't actually take up a draw slot as long as you have the energy. And late into the game, when you can get more energy and get more resources, it can it it cycles itself. I think Pommel Strike goes just in no I, I think it's is it b no it's definitely eight there i think it goes just above cleave power through good beta art let's look at that first but most of the time are we looking at it and thinking yang i get to take a power through no unless i have an evolve it's a it's a no-go for me usually if i have a bunch of other draw on the deck sure and let me let me let me state why power through is a good is a good wound adder when you're thinking about adding something like a wound strike a reckless swing something like that to your deck they add wounds into your draw pile whereas power through or status as i should say uh whereas power through adds it to your hand which then puts it in your discard pile same thing with emily great card right for its value but the next time you got to draw those two wounds Dude, that's tough. That sucks, right? If you don't have uh, a way to get rid of it in that turn, if you don't have uh, Evolve, not that good. Now, one thing that can go really, really well, unknowingly, with Power Through, is actually Runic Pyramid. And you're like, but the wounds sit in your hand forever. What does Runic Pyramid do? It allows you to play your cards on the specific turn that you want to. And if you have something like a True Grit, or you have something like a Fiendfire, 
it can actually amplify and work and, and work better if you don't have an evolve. If you have an evolve in your deck, fucking put this card in your deck. Because of the fact that it puts the wounds into your discard pile, and then as long as you play evolve first go round, is big. But because this card is is so situational, even though it's very very strong, it's oftentimes very situational. So I think we're gonna have to put it at like very very low B tier, maybe even high C tier. I think it's high C tier. It's great when it's no. I think it's low B tier. Yeah, it's low B tier. All right, pummel, pummel. Love me a pummel, and it scales with your strength just as well as heavy blade does even better than it if we're talking unupgraded big big is it gonna be as good as a sword boomerang sometimes you get to target whoever you want to hit with it but it exhausts so you can't use it multiple times so like if i draw it before i start scaling not really that good because i'm you know i'm gonna be inclined to use it but it's not gonna get a lot of value don't usually want a lot of pummels in my deck. It does have the exhaust factor, which means that you could get something like feel no pain block off of it. It does get val uh, uh, does get ex you know can get exhumed back, so you can use it on a very specific turn, right? There's a, there, there's some synergies with it for sure. I would say pummel is middle B tier. Sometimes it's gonna give you a bunch of value, but sometimes you're just gonna take it early and then. You have one in flame and it doesn't really eh. rage. <laughs> rage is an interesting card because this card doesn't get affected by dexterity, which is a bad thing, but also, or when you're frailed, this still gives you five. And in specific decks that have a lot of innate draw, it can be very good if you're using a frequent number of attacks in a turn. But this isn't like, you know, this isn't like talk to the hand where it's every single time that you hit something. It's just every single time you play an attack. But other than that, man, I mean, most of the time, it's, it's going to get value in some sense. But I think it's a very highly situational card. It's not free because you have to draw it. Remember, draw costs something in this game. And then, like, you know, later into the game, in a, in a hallway fight, I've got, you know, a billion powers and spells that are there to help me beat bosses. So drawing a rage with one attack plus, you know, my, my metallicize and, 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 and flame barrier, it's like all of a sudden I'm just doing blocks. Either way, I'm putting rage, not quite doo-doo dog shit, because it's not going to actively super hurt your deck for adding it, like some of these cards. But it, it, it can it can get some use. Rampage. This is a controversial card. Fantastic beta art. Wonderful beta art. It's really, 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 really good to beat Hexaghost. Yeah, it's not build defining. Building a deck around Rampage, usually a wrong choice. With a couple of headbutts, obviously, it can get quite good. There's times where it's good. One thing we do want to think about is it's really good in Act 1. It's fantastic in Act 1. If I find a Rampage on Floor 1, hell yeah, I'm putting it in the deck. The likelihood that I'm going to have to play my deck, tw my, my, my entire deck twice against Gremlin Knob is very high. And do I want a one damage or, 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 a, or a, a one mana deal 16 damage plus my bash? Fuck yeah, I do. Fuck yeah, I do. So I think because of its value in Act 1, I think that it should go at least in B tier. But it's a card that, unlike Pommel Strike, doesn't pay for its draw slot late in the game. There's no real way to get rid of it. So I think it sits at the top of B tier simply for that fact. As late in the game, it's just an upgraded strike because you're very rarely going to play it a fuck ton of times in a fight. You know what I'm saying? S tier, right? We're just going to throw it up there. Yeah. Reckless charge. F tier. Terrible. <laughs> okay. It's a it gets D tier. We'll give it D tier, alright? We'll give okay, I'll give it D tier. I'm sorry. It's like a slice from the silent 
except it does one more damage and it gives you a fucking status in your draw pile, right? And the draw pile status we talked about with power through is so much more dangerous because if you don't have already have the bottle, uh, the, the, the evolve in play, you're not going to get draw off of it. And then if you draw a status plus an evolve, that's two cards that aren't going to help you mitigate the damage that's incoming to you that turn. Rupture. Now, Rupture recently got buffed. Rupture recently got buffed, and I haven't had a whole lot of chances to work with him. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that's so fucking good. Pre-buff Rupture was doo-doo. It was C tier. But this... That's fucking demon form. And now, yes, it's the difference between three energy on one card and two energy on two cards. But you're also getting some sort of additive with the other card, right? You're getting some sort of additive with the other card that you're using. Major negative. You can't take it first. You have to have something other than it and then it. And then once you have that one combo enabler, you can consider more, but you can't take this first. So for that, I think it's top of B tier. One in the chat if you agree. It's so situational. I don't think it's so situational. Situational, yes. So situational, no. I think the the, the amount of times that you can actually... Okay, the thing is, is, the reason why you don't have it often in your deck is because all of the cards that you need in order to combo with it are uncommon, and then it's also uncommon. So uncommon or above right so it's 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 difficult to find the uncommon good card and then it so that's what i feel like it why it feels situational but in reality i feel like you oftentimes will get a good self-damaging card and then just never find a rupture it uses your face though the ironclad never seems to care about using his face man that's why he got a card call headbutt one of my favorite cards in the game do i get excited to see it oh I wish you could just keep pressing the upgrade button and it would just go brrr. It has its place. It has its runs. It's a big fat, your run is done. D tier. Better than perfected strike. When is it good? You find it on floor one. And then you look at the act and say, wow, there's 14 campfires. D tier for sure, because I like it. That is a biased opinion. I am fucking Fox News and NBC combined when it comes to Searing Blow. Feel No Pain makes this card kind of nuts. Because you're not only getting the five block, but you're also getting the Feel No Pain stuff. But it also requires draw, because if you're drawing five cards a turn, and then it's just like gonna exhaust like two cards and only be 10 block. Good with Clash. <laughs> Pretty good in a Runic Pyramid deck. Um, because a lot of times Runic Pyramid decks will have trouble getting cards out of hand. Um, most of the time a skill will do more than giving five block. That is true. Um, again, it's not a, a card that I would rate highly. Its downside is literally just not giving enough block. It's insane with Juggernaut. Yep. It's got its, again, like I said, it's got its synergies. It's got its value. Would I take it a lot if I had a Juggernaut? No. <laughs> just below Berserk in D tier. Not excited to see it, not excited to take it, not excited to use it. Literally takes up a draw slot just for me to get one energy. The only deck that it's really going to be good in is like a Runic Pyramid deck. When I can upgrade it to better bloodletting. Yeah, but is it though? <laughs> Real nice with ice cream? Sure. Again, it's got its synergies. I'm going to say it does feel nicer than bloodletting. I'm going to put it bottom of C tier. Of Heavy Blade. Sentinel is, dude, is... This is a card that I fuck with. I fuck with this card, man. It is situational. Don't get me wrong. It is. It's very situational. But saying that it's F tier, you have never opened this game. This card, oftentimes, takes a good run and sends it to the fucking moon. Corruption? Boom! Burning Pact, Skaboom! It is definitely hyper situational, hyper situational. But it is very good when it's when you add it 
to your deck because you're not going to accidentally add this to your deck thinking that it's good, right? You're only adding this to the deck in the final hour when you're like, dang, I need a fucking cherry on top. And then out of the shadows. Sentinel. It's seeing red, but good. Yeah, exactly. I think that this card goes at the top of C tier. Personally. Top of C tier. Sever soul. That's an F tier. We can go ahead and say that's F tier, right? Upgraded. Deal deal 22 damage. Yay. This is a dog shit card. And sure, it's a nice way. It's a nice way to remove wounds. Yeah, but it's like drawing a wound. Because if you draw that and a wound on the same turn, I cry because I drew that and a wound on the same turn. I think that Seversault goes above perfected strike in F tier. <laughs> Works well with Clash. <laughs> All right. Shack Wave. That's a hot card. That's a big card. This is a card that we're always excited to see. You always feel good about seeing a Shack Wave. Woo! Woo! I don't think I need to explain why it's all that good. I think that Shock Wave is the top of A tier. Yeah, I think it's the top of A tier. No S? I don't think so. I, I take it in most decks, but it doesn't do the most stuff. Shrug it off. Good card. Get excited if I see it most times of the game. Always willing to toss one into the deck, you know? It's just there. It ain't doing nothing hot, but it's not doing nothing bad. Again, it's cycling itself early in the game. It's a defend plus late in the game when you have a lot of energy. Again, paying for itself. You got a, a corruption. It's kind of like a defend plus plus dark embrace already. It just feels good to play. Feels good to have. Feels good to play. Feels exactly. I think the card art is exactly how I feel with it. I think that it's that I'm going to put it bottom of A tier. If Pommel Strike gets to be in there, so to shrug it off. I'm not going to be upset about having one, right? If you re-roll a card, transform a card, gives you a shrug it off. You're not going to be like, dang it, you know? It's just there. It's going to be useful. It's never going to be useless in your deck. It's never going to be, you know, you're going to re-roll, get a, get a rupture. And it's like, dang, dude, I can't use this rupture in my deck. Dang, dude, I got a body slam. Fuck. But like an upgraded defend. <laughs> oh, baby. Spot weakness is terrible against slime boss, but. It's a good card. It's a great card with Runic Dome. A lot of people forget about that. It's, just a, it's a fun synergy that I like to talk about. Um, head, hand, foot. Uh, with Runic Dome, it'll tell you if the enemy's attacking or not. Mid A overrated. I agree with you that it is A tier. I don't agree with you that it's overrated. Because the Ironclad has access to Vulnerable, it's kind of like... A Wreath of Flames from the Watcher, but all the time for the rest of the fight. I think that it goes A tier. I think that Strength Gain is amazing. It has so much synergy with what this class wants to do. It obviously has its downsides. Sometimes it'll ruin a run for you. I'm going to put it just below Inflame. Because a lot of times in like hallway fights, you don't need an exorbitant, like in the early hallway fights, Act 1, Act 2, you don't need an exorbitant amount of strength. And Inflame always gives you the strength, whereas Spot Weakness sometimes shows up on all the wrong turns in a champ fight, and you never get any energy out of it, and then you don't get to get a big Reaper off in order to help you survive, or a big Fiend Fire to finish him off, and then you just lose, so. All right, Strike sucks. How can I prove that it sucks? You're always trying to remove him from your deck. I'm gonna put it in F tier, just above defend. Now you're like, Tristan, you don't remove defense from your deck, but you do remove strengths from your deck. Yeah, but what beats Gremlin up? I rest my case. All right. Sword Boomerang. It's like Heavy Blade, except better. It's like Pommel Strike, but better. But it doesn't hit the same target, but usually it doesn't fucking matter because it'll hit once or twice on the right target. You're very rarely using this at a high strength in an AoE fight, and it hits all wrong. Because usually if you have a lot of strength, the AoE fights have less health. I think that Sword Boomerang is one of the best ways to dump your strength. That's a big term that we use, to dump your strength. I think it's fantastic. I think it's A tier, just above those. Now, you're not always going to take one, um, but I think it's I think it's crazy. Why is it over Pummel? Uh, because Pummel exhausts, and we don't actually want cards that are really, really, really strong to exhaust. I like Thunder. 
But I don't get excited to see Thunderclap. But again, it just doesn't do a whole lot for your deck. It is good AoE though. It's decent AoE. It's another good AoE card that the Ironclad has. But four damage for one mana. I got to take Thunderclap and I got to be fair here. I'm not, I don't love the card like Searing Blow. So I'm not going to arbitrarily buff it up. I think it's uh, C tier right here. Like it's great as soon as you get some strength because it's AoE strength. Sure, adds a vulnerable. Once you get some strength under your belt, it just scales. But alone, four damage. True grit. True grit is an interesting card. Unupgraded, C tier, low C. But with the availability of upgrading in order to be able to choose what card, in order to be able to choose what card I get to exhaust. We talking, thinning out the deck, procking our feel no pains, making room in hand for our runic pyramid decks. We talking more block than a defend, and we already like it when those are upgraded. That's a big card, man. Y'all all saying B tier? Mm -mm. I say bottom of A tier. Now it's situational, yes, but because it's, it's S tier when it's upgraded. It is an S tier card when it's upgraded. You would take an, uh, an upgraded True Grit on the Act 4 Elite fights before the heart. And it's a common card. But unupgraded, it sucks balls, so it can't go in S tier. Twin Strike. <laughs> Good beta art. Decent. Decent card. Scales with your strength well. It's like a sword boomerang, except targeted. It's not bad. Kind of slices things together. Not super good early. More of a mid-game card. Not a lot of those, honestly, around. It's more of a mid-game card. Before your deck goes to the moon. But when it's got, like, one inflame, a spot weakness, you know? Maybe, like, uh, some pellets on, a, on, on the mutagenics. Maybe a Jax. Strike dummy? Sure. Feels a decent amount. It's a decent card. I think that it's middle of the pack B tier. Right around Pummel. Uh, maybe right below Pummel. It's got a dragon. D for dragon. What the fuck? <laughs> I think that this card is just as good as Bash. The only reason why I think that Bash is better than Uppercut is because I don't have to choose to get a Bash. This is definitely better raw on paper. But I have to choose this over two other cards or a shop full of cards and I have to use my money or a library, right? I have to choose to put this in my deck, but I think this card is fucking phenomenal. I think it's S tier. Being able to rip two artifacts on a recurring card in your deck, I think it's very good at all stages of the game. Bottom of S tier? Yes. Warcry. Again, it's minus one draw. Whatever you draw with Warcry is what you would have already drawn. So if you're taking it thinking, wow, I can fish into my deck more. Obviously, if it's upgraded, it is one draw. So Warcry upgraded, I think is a really good card. Actually, I think Warcry upgraded is very good. Warcry unupgraded, because you're never going to really prioritize upgrading this card, is eh. Right? What it can do is if you have like, you know, Runic Pyramid plus Havoc, and then, you know, you want to put the expensive card down so you can Havoc it. Blah, blah, blah. What is the downside of taking it? Uh, the downside of taking it is Time Eater and uh, uh, the, the Chosen, right? People who make it negative to play specific cards. Gremlin Knob, obviously you're not going to really take it Act 1, but yeah, you're just you're just bloating your deck arbitrarily just to make things slower and and in a couple of fights. It does have its it does have its uses, man. I mean, you draw it if you have a bunch of draw and it's like, "Dang, I can't play this card this turn, but maybe I could play it next turn." Or, you know, I, I want to be able to fiend fire next turn and and I know that this turn I'm going to get hit and proc my centennial puzzle. Like there's a thousand reasons. Or like you have frozen I I think that it has its use case. 
but it's just not that good, especially unupgraded. Boom. Whirlwind. F tier. We are talking a card that deals less damage than a strike and makes me use my mana? What? What the fuck? And now I know what you're thinking. Hey, Tristan. What about Chemical X? Chat, when was the last time you had Chemical X? That's a big number. Uh, Mr. Streamer, you don't actually know when I took it, so now I'm going to say, yes, last night, actually. Yes, it has its places where it can carry a run. This right here, this is the speed running special. This is where you get at least D for speed running. All right, I'll give it a D for speed running. And I'll also give it a D because I feel like there are decks that you can make it work. But because of the noob trap that it is, we got to hit it, man. We got to hit it with a D tier for the noob trap that it is. Just the way that it is. Wound Strike. Wound Strike is, is very, very good early. It's very good, obviously, if you have Evolve, you know, those kind of synergies, whatever. Um, does a lot of damage for its energy cost. It can be good, but I would rather just have a Hemokinesis. I'll take it early in the game. Usually adding one wound into your drop pile ain't the worst. It kills Gremlin Knob. It's got an okay beta. It's not insane. It's pretty eh, beta art. I'm going to give it here. I'm going to put it right here in C tier because it kills Gremlin Knob. And that's a nice thing to do. This is my finished product chat all 75 of the ironclads cards 74 plus clash of the ironclad cards ah.